Welcome, everybody. We have a truly fabulous show for you today. We are featuring two of our exceptional women awardee leaders and the real estate company, global real estate company, JLL. They both work for JLL and are truly outstanding global citizens. Rihanna Casey is with the biotech and pharmaceutical group at JLL, and she'll tell us a little more about what she does. And Lauren Howard is with JLL Technology, and she makes all that fabulous real estate JLL innovation happen. So we're going to hear more about them, and we're going to hear about how they manage global teams, both pre- and post-COVID. There are a lot of changes. We're going to learn a lot today. I'm Lorraine Siegel. I'm the founder, chair, and CEO of the Exceptional Women Awardees Foundation. We are close to 100 women now, and our motto and mission is to enable high-level women to reach their dreams. Why did I start this foundation? Well, I never had a mentor early in my career as a lawyer and then a CEO of multiple companies, even as a board director. I never had a guide to help me on my way. And I wanted to be sure that women who walk the road less traveled, and you will see that Rihanna and Lauren both do, that those, those women would always have a guide of women like them to help them reach their dreams. That's exactly what we do at the Exceptional Women Awardees, and I am so delighted to welcome our two guests today, Rihanna and Lauren. Welcome. Thanks, Lorraine. Good Thanks, to Lorraine. See you. Hi there. Good to see you both. And let's go straight to you, Rihanna, because if listeners were listening closely, they heard your accent. I want you to tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, hi Lorraine, thank you uh, for having me today. I'm so excited to be in here. So I've been with JLL for just over eight years and I'm based in our life sciences vertical. Um, my accent is British, as I'm sure you can all tell, and I now live in the USA. Um, fun fact for you, Lorraine, um, while I work in outsource services, I actually have a degree in animation. So um, how does that translate? It helps me be really creative in the work that we do for my inspirational clients. Um, I was born and raised in the UK by my mum, who is a South African immigrant. And I'd taken a year out when I was 30 to travel the world and developed a real deep appreciation for other cultures. And it gave me a real appetite to, at some point, hopefully in my career work abroad. Um, I initially looked at working in Asia, and then I started working with a US-based client, a giant in e-commerce that I think we all know. Um, and then I spoke up to my leader and said that I really had an ambition to move regions and that I thought the US would be great for me. Um, I, I requested relocation and found myself here eight months later in sunny Chicago. Um, I'm often asked, how have I found the transition? Um, it's actually been really easy for me. Um, I think, Lorraine, I've got quite an extrovert personality. So that seems to fit quite well here in the American culture and workplace. It is no doubt, and we love you. And I know that everybody working with you loves to be with you as well, and we'll hear more about that. So, Lauren, I know that you're in London at the moment, and thank you for joining us. I know it's pretty late in the day there. Tell us a little bit about your background. Thanks, Lorraine. Yes, and I'm in Rihanna's old stomping grounds with our, our team here in the UK. Uh, as far as my background, even though my entire career, I've been a woman in, a woman in tech, I've always really focused on sales, business development, and leading commercial growth teams within technology businesses. So that's been both within Fortune 100 companies and within small startups. What I love is growing and building and leading client-facing teams. So three years ago when I joined JLLT, it was just at this really exciting time within our industry where we're bringing technology and services to our clients as a way to solve their challenges. And within commercial real estate today, especially a lot of those new challenges arising from the pandemic, it's just so timely, it's challenging, but it's exciting. That's, that's interesting. Let's, let's dig a little bit deeper on that. When you say challenges arising from the pandemic in the real estate industry, what do you mean by that? You know, the, the challenges are one, you know, how do we work now? You know, it used to be how the way in which we work was very predictable, right? Going into an office, maybe nine to five. Today, that could mean working from home. 
it could mean for some that are used to traveling. They're maybe not traveling as much today. You know, I'm, I'm here in London, but it's fairly unique. And then I think um, the second component is the way in which we collaborate has completely changed. So um, many, and especially our clients, are looking for us, to us at JLL, to help them solve those challenges. So that's where Rayana and I team up. So it's both top-notch services and guidance, um, but it's also innovative technology solutions that we bring to bear. And um, it's evolving and no client is the same and has, you know, even though they might be feeling those challenges of um, how do they empower their employees? How do they help shape the narrative um, of what their workplace looks like? The solution is not the same for um, for any of those clients. It's very different. Yeah, that, that is for sure. So, Rihanna, how did you and Lauren meet, first of all? And secondly, speak a little bit to what you do in the pharmaceutical area, because I know a lot of people really want to understand what you do every day. Absolutely. So I'm always looking for new and exciting and progressive ways to delight and serve my client. And within JLL, we invest a lot into the productization of our business and then also JLL Technologies, which we call PropTech. Um, a new product came out called Marketplace, which is basically our answer to, to Amazon, really, um, for products that we need in our outsourced industry that we work in. And I came across Lauren in a presentation one day and was just blown away with her energy, her passion. And what really elevated our relationship together was that the product that she'd been working on, the development on themselves of, was just incredible. And uh, I always love to work with, work with Lauren because she absolutely makes me look good. So I am so delighted to be on this call with her today. Well, I think you both make each other look good and you make us look good at EWA too because you're both such high energy individuals. So Rihanna, you manage a pretty large team, right? Tell us a little bit about how you've managed the team differently from post-COVID to during COVID and maybe we're not post-COVID yet, but what are your thoughts on that? So I think really, Lorraine, the most important thing to note here is that a long time ago, I made that critical shift between being a manager and leading the organization around me. And um, when the pandemic first happened, what I really needed to work out was how am I gonna lead myself? Because as many of the audience and you know, the only divide that I had between my home life and work, Rihanna, and not chaining myself to the desk for 20 hours today was a singular door. And I didn't get to jump in the car or get on the train and switch off from work and come home and be present. I could very easily get caught in the space of my office. And I really needed to make sure that I was blending my work with my home and my fantastic husband, Jack, and my stepchildren and creating that space for me. For my team, it was about creating community virtually, belonging, and a new culture because we actually had, um, very thankfully from our client, won a huge new piece of very critical business. And I had to make a number of senior leader uh, talent acquisitions virtually. I never got to meet them. And then building these relationships very, very quickly with these individuals and learning to trust each other. So for me, simply, the workplace experience should be great for everyone, whether it's virtual, you're in the office, you're in a manufacturing facility, all that home office. And we all have to contribute to that together to make that successful and achieve that. Yeah, you know, um, Satya Nadelli, Nadella, who is the CEO of Microsoft, just made a very interesting statement yesterday, which I'd love to share with you and get uh, get your feeling on it, Lauren, and then go back to Rihanna. He said that great teams are important and great teaming is currency, which is interesting, new currency. Great teaming is what gets you to the unspoken needs of customers. What do you think, Lauren? You know, I, I, I find that to be very true. Um, you know, when we think about a lot of the challenges that we're having today, it's because we're not teaming, right? Um, when we're at our best, it's when we're collaborating and we're be able to bring in unique perspectives to get to a better outcome. Um, all the data supports that, but it's just very hard to do. And so I think great leaders are ones that empower their teams to work closely together, both their teams and then you know with their clients or customers or other parts of their organizations um, and i also think that they lead by example right so 
um, showing what good teamwork looks like and, um, and listening. Oh, that's very, that's very, very true. I want to make sure that our audience does put your question in. I know there's lots of you out there because I got a lot of uh, inquiries before the show and there's a lot of interest in this topic. So please put your questions in. Uh, we will try and answer them as well as we can. We have a few which we'll put up a little bit later that have already come in. But I want to go back to um, the issue of your industry, uh, Rihanna, that you work with because the pharmaceutical industry just completely morphed itself during this time period of COVID. How did you cope with that from the JLL point of view? Well, luckily in JLL, we were set up pre-pandemic to serve our clients in a number of industry verticals. Um, I fortunately get to work in the life sciences vertical. And as we moved into the pandemic, um, as I mentioned earlier, we had a wonderful growth opportunity land on our table um, with our client who will produce billions of vaccines in 2022 that will re be redistributed to uh, from wealthy countries to poor as well, not to mention all of the other breakthrough medicines that they will make that change patients' lives. So we as a group in JLL are collectively focused on our clients' purposes and how through the outsourced scope that we manage do we allow their business to operate successfully and focus and deliver those breakthrough medicines. Um, I'm very fortunate that with my client, they view us as an equal partner, and we operate together to set the tone of collaborative success for the wider team. You asked about teamwork everywhere uh, earlier on. We are a team with our client. It's not JLL and the client, it's us together as one team being successful together. I think it's really important as well that you always choose to step forward as a leader, be the person that your client, your team, wants to pick the phone up to, no matter what the situation, and let them know that you are truly invested in their individual and collective success. And of course, we have a really good time together and enjoy being together, even when we have to have those really complex conversations. I want to talk about the good times because that's something that, Rihanna, whenever we're with you, you make us laugh. And I know that you use humor as part of your leadership style. So give us a few beats on that. So I think really it's less about the benefits that drives. It's more about me bringing my whole self to the workplace and being authentic. It really is just part of who I am. Um, as you know, Lorraine, us Brits have a great sense of humour um, and that just naturally translates into all of my communications. I think there's a real good, a real good feel factor um, and it lightens the mood and you want to make people feel good, or I certainly do as a leader. Um, of course, there is a place for everything, but this has always been really successful for me as I've navigated my career. Although, I have to be honest, when I first moved to the USA, I'm not sure my team always understood my dry sense of humour, um, but they definitely laughed along to make me feel better. <laughs> well, as long as everybody's laughing, I guess that gets the endorphins <laughs> pumping, which is the main thing. I want to go back to collaboration with you, uh, Lauren, because that is a very big deal. Uh, as you know, I wrote five books on alliances, so that's sort of part of my DNA. Can we talk a little bit about collaboration and technology and how those two concepts work together for you and at J&R? Yeah, so it's, um, it's a great question, Lorraine. You know, I think when we look at some of the challenges that we're facing, um, especially for high growth businesses, but every, any business, um, it's been related to the people, right? So whether it's attracting new talent, avoiding burnout, um, onboarding, building culture, doing all of that, and certainly you know, in the context of our conversation, doing it globally, it's really, really hard to do. Um, I think what technology not only has the, the opportunity to bring to the conversation is it's a, maybe allowing us to put our people first. Maybe it's a, a software application that allows me to understand when is Rayana going to be in the office? Because I'd like to go into the office on Tuesday, but I only want to go if the other people that I'm collaborating with, people that are part of my team are in. So helping us be productive, helping us be engaged, helping us belong. And then there's certainly... Um, you know, the, the element of productivity, enhancing um, how we get work done, whether that's through collaboration or whether that's through just some of the efficiencies. 
one of the big things that's come out of the pandemic is this concept of wellness. So not only mental health, right, and wellness, but actually, you know, just the cleanliness of our environments. So how can we leverage technology, sensor technology, automated uh, work systems to be able to ensure that the spaces that we're going into are not only clean, but they're safe as we go back to work. You know, Lauren, I am so impressed by the way you approach this, uh, both you and Brianna. Both of you could be chief talent officers because the way you are speaking is absolutely from the chief people officer point of view. And that is so different than the way it used to be. So, uh, Lauren, give us, you, you spoke a moment for a moment about sensors. Give us an example of a technology that would help to enable those mental health or people issues that you raised. You mentioned sensors. What would be another one? Yeah, so so not only sensor technology, but we're also um, hearing a term that you might hear, um, but it's relatively new in our industry. It's called workplace experience. We are very, very heavily indexed right now in how do we bring our spaces, not just having a boardroom with 10 chairs around it, but how do we redesign, reimagine, and recreate the way that we all work today? And so I think that's one of the pieces, whether it's a software application that allows us to, one, map out and understand the layout that's going to bring the most value to our clients and to the people that walk through the doors, or Rayana, I know in, in some of the cases that we're talking about, ensuring that we have um, the right amenities, the right experiences, so that at a large manufacturing client, you know, when they're trying to create an experience when their employees walk through the door to be able to attract that talent. So that is very intentional and it's ways that we are bringing not only tech, but coupled with amazing talent like the teams that Rayana leads, um, to our customers. Interesting. So, Rihanna, you mentioned collaboration. Both of you have many times again, which is uh, in my DNA. Uh, and one of the things I used to advise clients when I was in the consulting business was that your alliance managers should be embedded with your team. And the first thing I noticed about you is that your email address is the email of your client. It's not the email of JLL. And that is, to me, an incredible indication of the cultural integration. Give us a little bit more on that. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to, Lorraine. But the first thing I want to touch on is this, and this is a really important note. Although I work for a global real estate organization, I'm actually in the people business. I'm not selling a pen or a phone. I'm selling people to deliver an outsource service and become part of the client's culture. So when you think about everything that Lauren said and meshing those two things together, which is my team on the ground delivering, couple that with the progressive technologies in JLT, it is something truly magical and why we're industry leading. Fantastic. So I know Nicholas just put up a comment saying, you're a wonder woman, <laughs> Rihanna, which yes, I would absolutely endorse that. So I would say that if I had to name the top companies in alliance management, I would say that uh, JLL was one of them. So let's go backwards a little bit uh, to you, Lauren, and why technology? What, what stimulated you to go into the segment of industry? You know, um, what's interesting is I love at, at my core I love solving problems, right? And so it's it's both a challenge, it's an opportunity, and there's a lot of adrenaline in that. I think nothing feels better when it, for me than bringing a group of people together and tackling a challenge. And I think, you know, with technology, it's the perfect vehicle within our industry. Again, commercial real estate, for the past 15, 20 years, there really hasn't been much adoption of technology. And so I think that right now the timing is perfect, right, to transform just the way that we all work. And just think of how many people around the globe that walk into an office or a shared space or a flex space. It touches everyone. I mean, even if you're dialing in remotely, the way in which you work is um, fundamental to how many of us spend a lot of our day. And so just the, the ability to problem solve and leverage innovation and creativity. I think Rihanna kind of mentioned that, like bringing creativity to the table. The game is always changing and that is just fun. So a lot of companies are thinking about repurposing their real estate from commercial usage into residential. 
Do you have any thoughts on that, either of you, Rihanna? Yes, yeah, so I can start actually. My client, I have three clients within my client's organization and they are in very different stages of their journey. Some of the manufacturing sites are expanding with current breakthroughs that they are working on. Um, and then in other areas, they're looking at doing things differently. So one of the products we work on in JLT at the moment is around flexible, or in JLL products is around flex space. And it's almost um, repurposing that building to not only monetize unused space, but also to create this new environment for their employees to thrive in. Because talent, top of everyone's lips, right? Especially within the life sciences vertical, when you've got these incredible people doing things like making the COVID vaccine, they have to win that war on talent. So for me and the teams that I lead and manage, from the moment you walk into one of my clients' buildings, we are responsible from the heating, the cooling, the reception services, mail, is there hot coffee? And then again, coupling that with these amazing technologies that we have in JLL is something quite tremendous to see. So that is something which really almost goes into the area of design as well, right? Because you're designing as a, a, a living, working space for individuals. So, Lauren, how does your technology plug into that? Well, I think first the thing, you know, we just talked a little bit about sensors, but then it's in terms of design the space, what do you need? What is it built off of? Well, data, right? Data is essential, and it's really the lifeblood of um not only a lot of our core solutions that we'll bring to market, but it's imperative for our customers and our clients to better understand their data to make informed decisions, right? How many um, people might be occupying an office on any give, given day, right? That might be different on a Monday than it is from a Friday. Looking at the schematic, redesigning um, maybe, you know, flex spaces, as Rayana mentioned, to, un to be able to facilitate now meetings that require a lot more um, video and web capabilities than they did a year and a half ago. So I think um, reimagining is probably the, the, the best word to describe that, Lorraine. And, you know, the way that we infuse technology is really um, many, many, many different, not only unique solutions, but it's custom, right? It's custom and data is at its core. Well, you know, Satya Nadella, Nadella also said, space is the new collaboration tool. And it certainly sounds like that's exactly what both of you were saying. You know, we have a whole bunch of questions. Let's bring up at least one of them. Or we, I know we've got a few back up there. So let's bring up the first one. And that's uh, Brandy from Irvine. Lauren, what advice do you have for those who are looking to start a career within technology? Oh, I love that question, Brandy. So... You know, I say this to, you know, we've, we've hired a lot of not only, you know, early career talent, but at all, all levels. And I think one of the qualities we look for is we look for people who are curious, right? A thirst for knowledge is really essential here at JLL, not only on the technology side, but it's really a quality we value is that constant thirst to learn. We also look for risk takers, right? So we're not afraid to fail, to be innovative and to, to change the way that people work. You've got to be able to take some risks. But I would say in terms of how to get there, grow your network, communicate, and go for it, right? So being a risk taker, don't be afraid. If you don't fill out all of those requirements on an interview, I'm not an engineer and I'm a woman in technology. We hire loads and loads of engineers, but we also hire plenty of individuals that come from all backgrounds um, and, and in all countries. So I would say just go for it and lean into it. Yeah, and also, Brandy, think about the fact that what both of these leaders have said, creativity is a very important part of the expectation of somebody who works at JLL. So I think that, that that's another opportunity for people who have that side of the brain, uh, the right side working aggressively. Let's see the next question. We have a few out there. Uh, this is Evan from Evan from Chicago. Rihanna, you seem to, oh, yes, yes. What are the benefits of doing humor? And I know we had... A little bit on that, Rihanna, but do you think that the fact that you come from another culture is what is so appealing to people because people just love to listen to your accent? Uh, I, I think so, maybe a little bit, but I really feel that about being here with all of you and hearing your accents as well, actually. <laughs> so I think it's a reciprocal agreement. Um, 
But yeah, to the humor piece, just do what feels natural to you. Um, it would be difficult for me to not use that in my leadership style and in my conversations with my client because it would be me not being my true authentic self. Well, I, I love it. And I, I think it's, uh, you know, humor can go the wrong way sometimes. But I think that your humor, Rihanna, having been exposed to it for now some time, is just spectacular and it makes everybody happy. So uh, let's see the next question because this one I was just reading and it's a very, very interesting one. Uh, Lauren, you have young kids. You have a global job. There you are in London today managing teams all over the world. How do you manage with all the traveling and the family, young family? You know, it, it's a great question. It comes up all the time. Um, I would say it's balancing priorities, right? So, you know, some days that means more with the family. Other days it means more in the office or with my work teams. Um, I definitely acknowledge that there's no way I could do what I do without a fantastic support system. So uh, my husband is integral. And, you know, you talk about teams. I think one of the most important teams you can have is that uh, support team around you, whether that's a spouse or your family or just fantastic friends. I think the other component is, you know, I outsource what I can, not everything, right? But you ask for help because you can't do it all. And um, biggest piece of advice, Lorraine, I would give is to be forgiving with yourself. You don't always get it right. Um, there are good days and there are bad days, but at the end of the day, there's the next day, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not easy. And, you know, when you miss a game or a show or something like that, um, and the trade-off is you bring so much from your global experience to the family that they benefit from it. Having raised a son myself who's now over 50, I can tell you it pays off big time to have the leadership exposure that you have. Um, so there's another question that just came in, and I think that, uh, Rihanna, this will be one for you. Uh, let's see if we can bring it up quickly. Otherwise, I, I have it here. Um, so the question is from uh, Raleigh in North Carolina. Did you have culture shock, Rihanna, when you immigrated to the U.S.? Not really, no. And I think, obviously, I was moving to an English-speaking country. I moved with the same organization, and JLL did a really good job of um, moving me over here. And again, as I mentioned earlier, Lorraine, I think my personality um, really suits the American culture. So it was a very easy transition for me which is fantastic. And I think that uh, one of the, the issues, uh, Lauren and Rihanna, both of you must be dealing with is cultures and how to manage COVID and post COVID in different cultures. So Lauren, you said that you've just met a number of people you've hired for the first time and they've been working for you for the last six, eight months. Tell us a little bit about that and also about how you're tailoring your leadership style to manage cross culture. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly been incredibly challenging. Um, there's just no other way around it. I mean, building, onboarding teams, right? Training, getting to know them, doing that all cross culture and doing it for many, many of the, much of the time remotely, right? Um, it's very hard. I think one of the things that I try to do, it, Rayana used this word, I lo love this word, is I'm authentic, right? When you show up as you, you listen, you seek to understand, and you build that relationship, even though it's harder to do via Zoom, right? Um, you go there first and you start with um, the warmth and that empathy, right? We've all been in a sort of a marathon for the past two years. And so there's acknowledging the elephant in the room that it's hard um, and that it's probably, you know, even though it, hopefully it gets easier, it's still pretty hard. One of the things I, I try to do in, in the culture I try to set with my teams is try to break that marathon up, right, into ways that we can digest that, into more of like interval training, if you think about it. It's celebrate those successes. And I think those successes look differently across cultures, right? And so asking your teams, your global team, it may be, you know, my team in Asia, um, the, the culture and what success looks like and how they need to be checked in with is very different than my team here in Europe or my team in North America. So it's having those conversations and being willing to laugh at yourself and understand sometimes, again, we don't always get it right. We might step on some toes, but if we can laugh at ourselves and people feel that you're coming from a genuine place, um, it, it, it makes a, a tremendous impact. 
Yeah, we've all become so much more human, haven't we? So there are a bunch of questions out there. We're getting to the end of our show, so let's put up uh, the one that just came in from Trish. Hi there, Trish, and thank you. Oh, I love this. It's perfect timing. Has COVID made us braver? The data it has supplied seems to have given businesses the courage to make big changes and consider new ways of working, some of which were available pre-COVID. I love that question. Thank you, Trish. Rihanna, your thoughts, and then Lauren, we'd like your thoughts on that too. Yes, it absolutely has, because we've had to, to coin uh, Lauren's phrase earlier, reimagination, do things differently. What was most amazing to me is that we made this shift to everybody being at home and the world kept moving and technology didn't fail us in many respects. And we continued to progress and serve our clients and move forward, but just in a different way. So if anything, it's taught us just how resilient we really are. Amazing, amazing. So, Lauren, was there some technology that was having difficulty being adopted before COVID, which all of a sudden everybody embraced? You know, it's 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 less about the adoption of a technology, and it's more about actually the inertia to make a decision, right? So I think what the data, and Trish, very astute question, is that what the data does is highlight some of the needs and some of the challenges that were already there. And, um, you know, I, I think today what we're seeing is we're seeing our clients and our customers come to us and say, you know what, the data is showing or my business is feeling X. I now know I need to do something about that. JLL help me, right? Because again, it's not one product that's a, you know, a, a savior. It's really a breadth of, of services and technologies pulled together. It's a strategy. Right. So that's why our clients come to JLL is because we have the reach, the breadth and the expertise to, to partner. And Lorraine, as you said, it's collaboration at the end of the day. So the data is just the exclamation point on the need to collaborate. Amazing. You know, the two of you are so spectacular. You have such great insights. It's clear everybody wants more. So I'll have to invite you back. And thank you so much for being with us today. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. So we'll see you on our next show. Uh, hopefully in a few months' time, we'll schedule another one with you. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. Lorraine. Thank you. And, of course, we do not leave you without another show in the offing. We have a fabulous thought leader show coming up. This is going to be an amazing thought leader by the name of Gay Hendricks, and he has written a book called The Genius Zone. He has also given an hour of his time to our EWA leaders all over the North American continent, and he has certainly, certainly created some geniuses from our group. So I strongly suggest that you join us on our show, which is coming up soon. And also, I will leave you with a question today. Do you manage a team? Is it a global team? And how has your management style changed, if at all, during and post-COVID? I hope that you'll go on to our Amazon Music channel. This becomes a podcast. Spotify has it too, and also Apple, and of course, our YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you on our next show. Thank you so much for being with us, everyone. See you soon. <music>